Vibrations podcast, part 45, Mark Rawson. Hi, I'm Gary Brightman, and this is my periodic podcast called Vibrations. Established in 2018, Vibe is a book and music shop situated in Moi Wo, on Lantau Island, in Hong Kong. So, what's been happening at the shop recently? Major changes have taken place at Vibe in the biggest revamp of the past five years. Over the past six weeks, Stephen Walsh, our in-house store designer, has remodelled the tired old Vibe into a progressive music and bookshop. Vibe version 3.0. You really do need to come and see it to believe it. We've created much more room in the front of shop area now for music, gigs, talks and multimedia. The back half of the shop has the bookshelving reconfigured, the phone box chill-out room and a new larger children's book area. Larger kitchen for entertaining and finally there will be a new mirror canto pop holy grail feature. We listen to the feedback of our customers and are adapting accordingly. Our sales focuses our books of all genres including English, Chinese and French languages, double the amount of vinyl, CDs and cassette tapes, hi-fi separates such as record decks, amplifiers, speakers, cassette decks and CD players, gift cards, wrapping paper, t-shirts, caps, sunglasses and Vibe and Tails Animal Rescue merchandise. After six weeks off from events at Vibe, last Saturday was a storming return, tiny desk gig featuring Ken Wilkins playing bazooki. He blew the house away with his songs and lyrics. We'll definitely invite Ken back. You can see his performance on our YouTube channel, Live at Vibe HK. And we'll also publish it on Facebook at Vibe Silvermine Bay and on Instagram, Vibe HK. In two weeks' time, it's Vibe's fifth birthday and we have Valoria playing their brand of the Pixies covers. As well as some surprise guest DJs. The action starts at 2.30pm on Saturday the 20th of May. And finally, Vibe is not just a book and music store. We also produce music, video and audio books. Our music and video can be seen on YouTube at Live at Vibe HK and the first two audio books produced are now available on Audible and 50 other global platforms. The books are The Inner Circle, Wu Xing, Book 1 by Patrick M. Dransfield and The Green Door by Stefan Gannon. And so, to this week's interview with Mark Rawson. Mark retired from a career in wealth management with a plan to travel, only to time that with the arrival of Covid. The first few years have given him time to reflect and reassess the things he felt were important and reconnect with passions and practice, being open to saying yes. Currently, his list is playing music with a number of bands, The Nagging Egypts, Black Velvet Collective and The 852, creating music, writing, recording and composing, running musical showcases under the banner What the Folk, developing a self-help group for original artists and working to raise awareness of local talent through radio, media and general introductions currently planning for a World Music and Dance Festival plus a St. Patrick's Day Festival in 2024. He owns, with his daughter, an Embody Pilates and Yoga studio. He and his wife foster parenting with Mother's Choice. Drop-in support for a number of disadvantaged communities, mentoring a number of businesses, assisting on experiential learning camps with students helping his wife with her passion to craft the Indonesian batik, operating a small private kitchen focused on regional Indonesian cuisine and planning a podcast for this, getting ready for a number of expedition races and finally, if that's not enough, developing a number of concepts around the Project Do. Welcome to Vibe, Mark. Good morning, Gary. Pleasure to be here. Good, and lovely to have you. And so, as we do, we're going to start off with ten questions. Um, the first question being, what's your favourite book or author, or authors? 
Yeah, well, we're sitting in the bookshop, so I should, so I should be able to answer this one, shouldn't I? But uh, the, the, the answer at the end of the day is I don't have a favourite book and I don't have a favourite favorite author, but I do read books that um, are sparked by interest interest from, from something that I've done that, that's occurred relatively recently. So I'll give you an example on that, that uh, uh, I was back in the UK to visit my mum and dad who have just moved up to a place called um, Scampton, just outside of Lincoln. Okay. And the local pub there is a pub called the Dam Busters. Excellent. Okay, which is obviously where the Dambuster um, bombers took off from during the war to, to take take part in that, that, that raid that was so so important to the war effort. So as a result of that, um, at the moment the book I'm reading is about the Lancasters. Right. So there's there's a there's a there's a there's a series a gentleman I don't know the gentleman's name, but he wrote a wrote a book about the Spitfire. Uh, okay. And it was basically recollec- recollections of pilots that had flown the Spitfire and ground crew and people okay. involved, involved in etc. And and he basically captured, whilst he still could, um, sort of stories from the people involved right. uh, at the time. Um, and he's done another one uh, on the Lancaster. So, okay. so I haven't visited um, the, the Dan Buster's pub, met the owner who's um, the grandson of one of the guys that flew in the, the raid. 633 Squadron? 633 Squadron, yeah. And uh, so, so I've bought, I'm reading the Lancaster book at the moment. Brilliant. Um, and that's, that's, how I, that's how I dip in and out of books. I'm not a great reader in in the sense of reading all the time yep. ago, I did read quite a lot of um, sword and sorcery I suppose with you know, yes. Lord of the Rings and things of this nature but uh, but these days it's more more about sort of dipping into things that have that that, that are that are happening around us. Who are your favourite musical artists? Well, you're sitting there with a T-shirt that's uh, one of those. Um, yes. So, uh, so Gary's wearing a specials T-shirt. Uh, so yep. that, so I think we're, we're roughly the same age and we grew up in the same sort of environment yes. back in the UK. So, yeah, that whole ska movement of the late 70s, early 80s was, oh. was really, really oh. important to me. Um, and I get out, uh, actually, actually had the pleasure of... Uh, attending a couple of the first two tone tour uh, yes, events. Yes, me uh, too. Yeah, uh, which were just just amazing. Blew uh, us away, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just just that blend of uh, punk spirit, but also those yeah. those sort of um, Caribbean rhythms. Which yes, just <laughs> yeah, just amazing, just amazing. Um, so so definitely that. that yes, that, so, yes. So that was a so yes, yeah, so I was going to answer this by basically saying a little bit like books. Um, I, I tend to dip in mm. and out based on what moves me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So music, music has to make me feel something, and that that, that could be it can make me feel sad, it can make me feel happy, it can make me want to sing, it can make me want to dance, but it yep. has to make me want to do something. So I like music of any genre that makes you want to do something. Yeah, that's a good. good um, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you know, there, there are within that pantheon, there are sort of artists, and there are um, t- certain certain types of music that are more important to me. So ska yeah. music, ska music is one. Uh, if I go back in time a little bit pre that, then I suppose one of the most uh, f- my most followed bands was Genesis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pre uh, pre Phil Collins really taking over as a, as a songwriter. Yeah, sort of mid seventies. Yeah. Early yeah. to mid seventies. With um, with actually my my I was boss thinking about this long and hard. The one album that I do go back to on a regular basis um, is Genesis Seconds Out. Okay. Yes. So yeah. That, yeah. Is, that yeah. is the Gabriel songs in a live environment, um, sung by Phil Collins. Because I quite like Phil Collins as a singer. Yes. But I didn't particularly like him as a as a songwriter. As a Genesis. writer, yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah. And uh, I love the, uh, the 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 vibe of that album, particularly the last. The, going back to vinyl now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, side four, which is uh, Dance on a Volcano, Los Endos, etc. It's just just amazing yeah well albums just flowed didn't they and they were a body of work they were two sides to make a whole um and they they were you know studio built at, like a biorhythm i think yeah and actually it's, it's one of those things that i think um i'm a little disappointed for the generation today that they don't perhaps experience that in the same way and yes and maybe they're maybe in the, you know at the end of the day they, they would say they get something better out of music than we do uh, and that's a fair comment but it, but when when we were younger um you would actually you come across an artist through normally a single or normally a mate that that, that sort of recommended something because yep. it wasn't really there was radio but it was quite difficult to tune into yeah. 
it was quite difficult to to capture a particular artist at a particular time because you know the, the, it was it was at eleven o'clock on a on a on a Thursday night yeah. uh, on Radio X Y Z and it wasn't repeated. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, so it was quite difficult. But oh, we had it hard, didn't we? We, did Mark? It. we, yeah, did we it had hard. it hard. <laughs> but, but, the, but the result of that is yeah. that basically, when when you bought, so so you'd you'd hear a track and mm. that would encourage you to go and buy an album, um, and it was within two two months or whatever of having the album. The the track that took you to the to buy the album was is, is was the least yes popular yes because you do you, you suddenly right. understand that that was the accessible part of something that of a body work that the was lead really, in wasn't it was yeah. really quite important yeah yeah um, and so I, I, that immersion into the artist uh, rather than the pop element of the artist yes yeah um, was was something I, I think was was really yeah it was a real experience and it it was a real yeah. thing and. Uh, yeah, it, it, you were pleasantly surprised, I think, then by the albums because you ha in, you would always know that you would yeah. always know I'm listening to the most commercial thing that that person's going to do, and then they're going to take me onto this journey deep into into their minds, into, into their, their minds, into, into, yeah, into, into their creativity, and that, yeah, and 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 it, and it be, goes far beyond a, 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 a thirty second chorus that basically yeah. took you there in the first place. Yeah. I think you know bands like Queen. I think bands like you know, uh, the Clash, the punk bands. You know, were very much like that. You know, if you listen yeah. to a lot of the punk stuff, I was a big punk fan. Um, they were the very commercial stuff at the front end that you would hear, and then you would get back into them, and you go, ah, there's a political element to this as well, yeah, and there's yeah, a, yeah. Uh, you know, a social element to this, and it, yeah. Most, most definitely, yeah. I mean, we're bringing it forward um, at the moment. I mean, I'm still, sort of, still, still, <laughs> still have some. We're just checking if we're recording. Yeah, we uh, are. Yeah. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> um, so, 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 uh, still sort of dip in, in and out of um, sort of global, global music, etc. But at the moment, I'm, yep. I'm really immersed in the, the local scene. So, so try and partly because of the radio show, which I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, we'll have a quick could chat on I'm sure a little bit later yeah um, but uh, every week I've got to come up with a, a list of tracks to play with Phil Phil on the radio uh, yeah and that means I've got to go out and do a little bit of research yes <laughs> um, and I've been really really not just pleasantly surprised but uh, just blown away by the artists here in Hong Kong so um, so give you give you a couple of examples so today on the way over on the ferry I was listening to the brand new album from Todd Warner Moore uh, so Todd's a chap that lives over on Lama. Um, he's written, I think it's now seven albums in seven years. Wow. Um, he's a, he's he doesn't perform that much. If he does perform, but he does doesn't perform uh, that that much. So so he's a little bit of a best kept secret. Um, but he's a, just a beautiful, tender singer songwriter. Um, real sort of sort of stories of his world. Yeah. And it's just phenomenal. Uh, Paul Roth, an Australian young young man, yes. si similar similar sort of similar sort of vibe. Uh, he's come off the back of um, playing in a couple of uh, indie bands, one of which Ezzy Morp. Uh, unfortunately, it's broken up, but but until it did, was one of my favourite bands here in Hong Kong. Yeah. And then you've got people like Murphy's Law that are that are just in the process of recording stuff at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely amazing dancehall and reggae music which you would love yeah yeah absolutely absolutely, abs absolutely love and uh, the young bucks uh, i mean the list can go on and very on. very talented yeah. band yeah, yeah the, the list, bucks. Can, list can go on and on and, and it's it yeah there's all sorts of genres here in hong kong at the moment which is which is so so wonderful from sleeves which are a, in inverted commas a british indie yes, band yes mr Koo, who are a sort of surf punk uh, yes band. yeah yeah uh, so so on and so forth it's just just amazing yeah amazing. sirens we've got we've sirens. got all sorts haven't we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Favorite films? Uh, yeah, this is a little bit easier in terms of act, uh, you know, given a specific as opposed to sort of more generic because yeah. Godfather one and two are my yes. two two, yeah. two favorite films of all time. And again, it's important. It's important in terms of this. It's about things, films that I would rewatch. Yes, on a fairly regular basis, just to just to get back and the, the characterizations, the storyline. Just, just amazing. That, yeah. that that musical score again. Oh, 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 oh yeah, so yeah. hauntingly beautiful. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so that that was a relatively easy one. Um, yes. The Lord of the Rings. Yes, love, love um, those those three yeah. and the Hobbit, etc. So I like I like that sword and sorcery piece, which we sort of mentioned a bit earlier. Yes. Preferred drink? Do we have enough time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was listening to your podcast actually, so I'm, so I'm actually feeling like a bit of a broken record because um, mm -hmm. most most of your your um, uh, interviewees said uh, tea. 
Yes. Um, and you, you, you've got to speak to my wife about this. But basically, she will, she will say the uh, British people will, will uh, rule the world on tea. Yes. Uh, or fix every problem on a cup of tea, and that's 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 where I am, I'm afraid. So. Yeah. Um, you know, come come home from a big night out, cup of tea and a biscuit. Um, if yeah. normally there's no cake, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a cup of tea, and then a closely followed. Um, not so much in Hong Kong because there aren't so many places you can get it, but a real ale. Yeah, sadly. A real yeah, ale. Yes, yeah. It's from a hand pulled pump. Pulled, yeah. Yeah, with uh, no gas. I was going to say, yeah. No gas. Yeah. Uh, slightly chilled because people always say it's warm, but it's not actually. It is slightly chilled. Yeah. But, but it's, it's room temperature ish as opposed, as opposed to cold. Yeah. Um, sitting on a nice, nice sunny, sunny, uh, sunny evening. Yeah. Drink, drinking in a beer garden in the UK. That's You've got me imagining it straight away. <laughs> yeah. exactly. And the feeling of drinking that, that real yeah. ale. It, it is something we sadly miss. I think I wonder whether it translates well to this climate, perhaps. Um, well, it, it, it pro probably doesn't, but, they, mm. but there are a couple of places that you can. So a little, yeah. a little shout out here. So if, you, if you're in the Globe, for example, they have, yes. one, they have one hand pull in there. Uh, normally supplied by Yardley's, um, so so there's at least yep. normally one there. Do you have a life motto? <laughs> so there's two <laughs> questions here that are quite similar. I, I would say, you know, best advice you were given a life motto. They often blend into each other. Well, the the, the best advice actually is quite easy to answer. Um, yeah, life motto we'll, we'll come back to, um, and that that was because I had, I had the real fortune to work for um, a, a gentleman called Ian Dyke. Um, for many years back in the UK, uh, in I worked in finance, and again I know that's that's we'll come back to. He was a wonderful, wonderful manager, fantastic people manager. Um, you know, in, in in life there are always things that don't go that, that go well, and there's always things that don't go so well. And uh, he would always sit sit me down when you know, normally things went well. So yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a nice positive piece, but if things didn't go. He said, uh, "Okay, I see. I can, I can see, Mark, you're worried." He says, "Don't be worried. Be concerned, but don't worry." Worry, worry. He saw as as a very negative, yes. uh, negative trait. Yes. Um, be concerned because there's something that you need to fix, and and so on, so on, so forth. Um, you know, it is something we, yeah. need, we need to work on. Yes. Um, but there's no point worrying about it. I like that. I like that because that turns down the frame of mind, doesn't it? From uh, something you know beyond worry is really panic. Yeah. Um, but c beyond concern it, it is then a how to fix. Yes. Thing. So yeah. it's getting your head in the right shape. I like that. Yeah, I've yeah. never heard it before. Yeah, no, no, the, and and I've, I've lived lived my life like that. Yeah, ever, ever uh, since. well, it's, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, it's it's a, it's a yeah, makes a lot go. of sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Life motto. I don't yeah. have one as such, um, but but a little bit ar around um, some some of some of the pieces that um, I think life life and experiences and adventures start with the word can. Yeah, yeah, the positive, the positive. Yeah, um, too many people will will look at look at something. So you'll be presented with something, and you'll find the reasons not to do something first. Yes, I I like to these days and and have done for for, for many years. Start with can I, and yeah, then, and then you get into the <laughs> yeah yes the <laughs> into logistics. The logistics of it. But yes, if you start with can yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah I can do that. Uh, a small yeah. example there is that. Uh, uh, we we foster, um, so we foster through through Mother's Choice. We've had the pleasure, over the last um, two and a half three years, of of um, seven children th through through our through our home. Fantastic, um, which has been a been a wonderful experience. And people keep keep asking, how do you do that? And says, well, yeah. because we can. Yes. Um, uh, you know, we're at a, we're at a life life position where we we can put the time in. Uh, we have a life position where finances are not so so much of a concern. They're always a concern, but they're not so much of a concern. Yeah. Um, and we've both got the passion and and experience, and I suppose the heart to to be able to do it. So yes, so, so, we, can. so we can. And it is big heart, isn't it? I'm okay. We're going to veer off slightly here, then. So, <laughs> and you, because you have told me about this before, and I've never really had time to talk to you properly about it. D when you foster, who who are you fostering? Um, what age groups? D yeah. Um, so I suppose, I suppose it comes comes so, so taking it back a little bit. Um, mm. So we we and I second marriages um, been together for just over ten years, and okay. uh, when we when we came together, I, I had three children. She's got two children. Did we want um, uh, biological children together? Uh, 
the short answer was probably not. With the, and again, let, let's be let's be selfish with this this answer. Yeah, the commitment for another eighteen plus years at that, that yes, time, um, absolutely would would have yeah. would have resulted in us doing different things with our lives. Yeah, well, that's a responsible um, outlook for sure. Yeah, so 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 we we basically basically considered and and come to the conclusion that that wasn't where we were wanted to be. Um, but we wanted that experience of helping a child in some shape, shape or form together. Um, and we saw an advert, actually. Um, simple, simple, we had been thinking about it. Adopt, yeah. Actually, adoption was one of the things we were thinking about. Um, but uh, the, then Mother's Choice put an advert out. I think it was on social media. Um, or it might have been a radio interview or something of that nature. Yeah. But they were talking about bridge parenting. And they were looking for people to um, to join a program called Bridge project bridge and we just went around long for the um for the uh um did a half day induction just just, just okay. to find out a little bit about it and the project bridge is a, is a is a is a lovely um sort of step in because it basically allows allows you to step in as a foster parent but it also lets you step in as a relief parent okay so yeah. you, you you imagine you get a call tomorrow say we've got a young child um, they need support for the next three to six months. Uh, are you available? You would say, well, yes, but I've booked a summer holiday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So your answer is yes. Yes. Can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the, logis- make it happen? the yeah. logistics are there's a prob there's a problem this, in this this two week period because we've already booked it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what what they what uh, Mother's Choice now have is basically relief parents that sit sit alongside an, a main parent. Okay. Yep. So you can actually uh, you you could be the lead lead parent on a foster program, or you could be a relief parent on a foster program. Okay. So so right. we've 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 been lead on a couple a couple of youngsters, and then we've been relief parenting on okay. those, which is basically yeah. sort of like grandparenting. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's, <laughs> that's, that's a good ex- description. It is absolutely ga- grandparenting, isn't it? It's where the grandparents would step in. It's where they would step w- w- in, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Where so. fathers and sons and daughters and whatever wanted to go on holiday and have some time to themselves or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and Continuity. It, uh, con- cut it. And it doesn't, it's not necessarily around um, holidays, etc. because many, many... Situations, many, many, hospital, that's whatever. Right. It could, yeah. be, could be lots of reasons why you just need, yeah. need that support. When we had our first child, um, a beautiful little little girl, uh, was with us for the best part of three years. She she wow. was she was she was on the pro- process to be adopted, which was supposed to take three to six months. As I say, it took roughly three years in the end. Wow. Um, and we were actually the relief parent because basically we'd actually just joined the program um, within a space of about two or three weeks. It's a good induction. Yeah, it was, yeah. But the, the main, the main parent, yeah. the main parent actually, um, again, circumstances, things happen. Yeah. They, they, they needed to step back from being the main parent, and so we, so we, we took over. Um, uh, but we worked then with a lovely couple, Portuguese couple, young couple, no children them, at that stage themselves, and um, they, they helped us on weekends because again. Um, certain weekends you you've got a life to live and yeah, things yeah. to do yeah, yeah so they, yeah. Would, they would step in and help us out so yeah so so again it, it, going back to that <laughs> life model if it is such a one yeah um pe- people will say well what how can you do it well the answer is because we can and secondly yes. because we then we then worked a, a with mother's choice and some friends and so on and so forth we you worked the logistics out to make it happen yes yeah um to an- answer the question okay uh, in terms of ages newborn through to yeah through to whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And they're largely Hong Kong children? They're, they're all they're all children born here in Hong Kong, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they're they of different parentage, yes. uh, heritage. Um, yeah. Um, local Chinese through to uh, mixed race, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 What yeah. a great thing to do. Well done. Thank you. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, people say that, and I and obviously appreciate the comment, the... the the, the actual response to that from myself and we yeah. is, is we get more out of it yeah yeah <laughs> well I, I can imagine me in that position i would feel i'd get more out of yeah, it yeah. yeah you get this yeah. such an experience and, and yes. again apolo- apologies for, for a very personal reflection on this but uh, when i stepped into weaker's life she had she has had two young young boys um and of course you know you're stepping in as a in a very common stepfather yeah um to uh, and with all the challenges that brings on both sides yeah um, and actually, the first child we had, um, who we, as I said, she was with us for nearly three years, 
Um, the it was, it was heartbreaking for all of us when she left us, um, but actually, yeah. Yeah. on reflection, the oldest son, uh, Rudy, he um, he turned around and said, uh, he was asked, what do you think about the experience? And he said, well, it's it's been really good because it's brought us together as a family. Yeah, was, yeah. Like yeah, 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 it's given, it's given them that family feeling. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, it, what's the oldest um, fostering you've done? What age, age group? Well, the, well, the oldest, the oldest, would have been the, the little girl when she left us at three. Three, right? Because okay. every other yeah, one so has. It's all in that age. They, they've all been babies yeah. straight, straight from hospital. Yeah. Now the okay. the Mother's Choice program, um, they generally support young mothers um, going through that early stage. So, so they generally support up to the age of six. Okay. Um, Got you. Other other agencies, including the social services director, obviously looking for foster parents. Yeah. Um, at all ages. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, if it's something you're interested in, then you can you can you can reach out to a number of different agencies. Mother's Choice is just one of one right. Of those. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll we'll put that um, web link on the podcast actually. Mother's yes. Choice. Yes. So they they regularly run um, sort of induction days uh, to talk through it through it all. Um, yeah. As I say, called Project Bridge. Okay. All right. So. All of that went came out of life motto, <laughs> and yeah. so here we are, circling back to question six. All oh, right, uh, one hour later. Anyway, so favorite Hong Kong walk. <laughs> These are such general answers, I'm afraid, Gary. That's um, fair enough. But uh, but let, 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 let's let's be honest. The, the Hong Kong. If you talk to people outside of Hong Kong, uh, talk to my friends back in the UK. Oh yeah. Um, their their image of Hong Kong is of a of a city metropolis and 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 that's it. I'm always telling people this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And, yes. and and I mean, I'm sitting here sitting here at the moment in this bookstore looking at a map called Lantau Island and the neighbouring neighbouring islands, which yep. is basically an ordnance survey survey map. Um, and you you open that up and yeah, it just it's just the world's your oyster. Yes, just, ab- just absolutely. Amazing. Um, yeah. So the so the answer to this is we, uh, Weeker and I um, we we love hiking. Um, and we've yeah. been fortunate enough over the over the last well, all the time I've been in Hong Kong, but the last ten years, to pretty pretty much have hiked everything. Yeah, um, yeah. So include, including actually on her birthday a couple of years back, we did the four trails in uh, ten days. Right. So we did rough, roughly roughly thirty odd k a day. Um, yeah. For for, t- for ten days. Um, Let's get going. And uh, it. it 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 was going below our own trumpet because we were working in the afternoons. <laughs> so wow! We we're doing the walk in the walk, walk in the morning, then head, heading into work in the afternoons. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. So that's the Macklehose and the Wilson's Trails, Lantau Trail, Lantau uh, Trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, so that that so we're fortunate to do all of those. Now they those aren't are my favourite trails in fairness, although the Wilson Trail, particularly up um, uh, beyond. Um, New territories, New territories yeah. is, is is stunning. Um, yes, uh, my daily walk is a is a little walk off the back of where we live, which is called Brick Hill. Right, um, and it's just it's classic of what we've got available in Hong Kong. Yeah, I, I I get onto land, I walk walk three minutes down the road, and I'm in Country Park. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I used to live in Discovery Bay, we talked about this. this yes, area. I walk out of the flats. Walk five minutes and you're in. You're in. We are pris- pristine countryside. Yes. Uh, here, here in Muiwo. Yeah. <laughs> Up there, and you're onto the Olympic Trail, and then the whole. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, is your oyster. Just, just, just amazing. And so, yeah. So I, I don't have a favourite walk. If yeah. I'm honest. Brick Hill is my daily walk. Yeah. Um, it's become a bit of an Instagram um, place, <laughs> and so basically the weekends we tend to go somewhere else because there's basically just hordes of people yeah. taking photos. But yeah. uh, it's hiding from them. Well, but I'm pleased that people are, are doing it. I mean, For sure. Again, again, if you go back in back twenty odd years in Hong Kong, then myself and my friends were one of the few people out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, now, COVID's had a lot, lot of impact on. Yeah, the, the environment. major impact. But, but a very positive one in terms of getting yeah. people out and about. Yeah. There's some negative around that, but but the but the positive yeah. is people are out out enjoying the countryside yeah. and appreciating what we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's a big positive in Hong Kong. Yeah. The, yeah. the Hong Kongers themselves have ventured out, and they, you know they can't get on a plane anymore, so they've got on a boat 
and they've started walking. And, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and all other activities from yeah. you know paddle boarding to sailing to yeah. to just, just, camping. Just, yeah. We've had a lot of camping yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, favorite Hong Kong restaurant? I bet there's a few of those. <laughs> well, we were actually t- talking about this earlier, so yeah. so I'm going to going to go back in time and actually re-mention the the re- restaurant we were talking about. Yeah. Because uh, for for many many years, uh, my favorite restaurant was here in in Bui Wei. Unfortunately, it's closed now. Yeah. Um, and that was a Bachi restaurant just down the road, which was a Turkish restaurant. Yes. Um, and I had the pleasure, for example, of. Uh, playing a crisp Christmas gig there so eating turkey in the Turkish whilst playing Irish music so there we go that was, <laughs> that was some cult- cultural cultural <laughs> in issues. the middle of the South Lantau in the middle of the South Lantau <laughs> Sea the South Lantau yeah, yeah. Um, South but, China Sea so, and you had um, Sertuk who was the the Sertuk yeah. uh, just a wonderful guy uh, yes um, I, 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 we I, miss him I think I think a good host makes a venue yeah yeah he was a classic uh, example, wasn't he? Absolutely, so welcoming. It always, it always, it, it, it know you, know you from Adam, and it was just, 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 just yeah. amazing. There's, there's another, another place. Um, isn't my favourite restaurant, but I love, I love the vibe when I go in there. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm walking across from, from the Kennedy Town, um, uh, MTR, and the, the, the guy there basically sees me walking across, and he puts a pint of IPA on the bar before oh. I even arrived. Yeah. Um, so, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit bit previous, really. Isn't it? Come, on, <laughs> come on, I might want something else today. But no, I'm gin and tonic, please. <laughs> and he's sitting there waiting for me, and I, I like I like yeah. that, I like that sort of that sort of environment. Um, yeah. My favourite at the moment, I'm going to have a plug on this, is my wife's kitchen, rustic kitchen. Nice. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Private dining experiences. Right. She, she's a fabulous, fabulous uh, cook. Um, cooks Indonesian cuisine of different different varieties from different regions. Okay. Of Indonesia. So yeah finish this sentence I live in Hong Kong because (laughs) Um, where else can an old man like like me do so many things so easily that's very true actually isn't it it, it's such a such an empowering empowering place Um, you know yes there's I don't think we I certainly don't feel my age here no. Um, no, my my kids would probably <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> agree right? with that one. <laughs> I'd actually kind of cover their eyes and put the fingers <laughs> in their ears. And, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's it's an empowering place. You, you you can you can have an idea, and and within reason you can you can you can get it to work. Yes. Your favourite area of Hong Kong? Easy. Yep. My roof. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My roof. It's my little little sanctuary. It's yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, whilst whilst I talk about the uh, this creativity and the 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 environment to, to be able to do things in Hong Kong, it's just lovely to be able to get away and yeah. sit on the roof and relax and just contemplate yeah. life. Look at Apley Chow. Look at, look at the high Chow. rise. Look at Apley <laughs> Chow and look at the spot where the jumbo used to be. I was going to say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But I hear they're doing up the. Um, the other one, Thai uh, Pak, is it? Thai Pak. Well, I really th- yeah. so so obviously there was so, there was a sending in the press recently on that, and and that that's good to hear. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate though, and and uh, that they've let it rot for so long. But okay, so that's the ten questions. Mm. We're going to go back now to what did you do in the UK back in the day <laughs> before you came to Hong Kong, before you were in that school disco with a warm. <laughs> Heineken, warm and, and it a, was warm. Yes, and a I'm square sure. cheese, Rivita biscuit. <laughs> you've you've got it pictured perfectly. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, very very simple, I suppose. Just yep. just lived a fairly fairly, a really really enjoyable, fairly normal life. I mean, basically, yeah. um, I was raised predominantly in a place called Reading. Okay. Uh, just outside yep. of London. Um, I was actually born uh, just down the road in Windsor. Um, uh, my, da- my dad was in the forces, so we actually travelled around a fair amount. My dad's, okay. my dad's uh, from a place, place just outside Scunthorpe, uh, which is hence, hence why they've moved back towards Lincoln. Uh, okay. Mother's from Ireland. Um, so uh, basically we, we travelled around a, f- a fair, fair amount early, early days, but most of my childhood was growing up in Reading. OK, so two questions about your parents um mm. your father was in the forces what, mm. what what was he in the forces which which forces was he in i uh, he was in the uh lifeguard so so the, the cavalry okay. the cavalry but i mean he, he wasn't in there for that that long but we had we had basically five or six years of uh traveling around in the air uh, when i was very young 
Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so they then basically settled down, as I say, say in Reading. Mum, um, Irish, and so is that where you get your musical and Celtic uh, heritage yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, it, it is, it is. Um, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing, actually, in terms of folk music in a, in a broad sense, and, and Celtic music in particular, is it, is it wasn't really my genre of music during during my formative years. It wouldn't be, no. Because, you know, the, it was... My gran would sing songs and my mum would sing songs and and you'd pick up the ditties, but you wouldn't. I wouldn't then go out and try and buy a rec- record no. of those artists. No. Um, well, you'd uh, be stoned at school, probably, if exactly, you did. Exactly. <laughs> you like what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. aside from the occasional sort of sort of watching a, an Ireland rugby or London Irish uh, rugby game and, yeah. and sing, singing a few songs there, then then it really it, it, it was there in the background as opposed yes. as opposed to music I yes. listened to uh, as 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 in, in a listening pleasure yes. type of environment. Yes. Um, but as I've got older, I've just I just love the storytelling side, yeah. side, side of folk music okay. so the answer is yes that's where it came from yeah the the, the longer answer is it ca- it's 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 sort of gradually surfaced over the years yeah uh, gotcha. as opposed to something that uh, has always been there yeah um yeah, yeah. with the exception of something like the pogues oh. <laughs> oh. well it was cool to love the pogues and it still is still is Paul, most definitely. Uh, and, and to marvel at shane mcgowan still being alive and a kick in, yeah. You've got to love that guy, haven't you? What an amazing What's character. he made of? <laughs> <laughs> the same material as Keith Richards, in fact. <laughs> All right, so there you are. You're in Reading, you have an early career in, in finance, I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was that was really simple because, yeah, basically, I, I finished I finished um, uh, secondary school, so A levels, yeah, and um, had a place at uh, university, um, sort of booked. Um, but as as typical typical teenager, I thought I knew better. Uh, you always do. And my yeah. my parents uh, went off on a on a on, on a holiday that they'd planned, which yeah. uh, which I wasn't invited to. I don't think that's entirely true, but oh, it's a cool <laughs> it's a cool way to say it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, and basically, they came back to a note on the table said, "I've um, gone gone uh, grape picking." <laughs> gotcha! Wow. So um, so we didn't end up going to university. Good, um, so when I came, when I came back from uh, <laughs> great great picking for a while, they basically said, "Well, okay, what are you going to do with your life now?" I says, "Well, well I don't know really." Yeah. And a, and a, a family friend up the road worked in banking, Midland Bank. Do you remember them? Yes, I was a member uh, of Midland Bank before Midland they were Bank. HSBC. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he worked at banking. He sat me down and had a little chat and I said, "Well, you." you you pick grapes, grapes. <laughs> Can you, you count in, grapes? <laughs> you get into finance, and so uh, yes. So uh, that's where I ended up. I didn't end up middle bank. I actually ended up with Commercial Union, um, yes, who were a in big insurance company. They had what's called an A level trainee program, but it, but it was a good grounding. They um, they then sent me to my first overseas posting, and I got posted to the Isle of Wight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> How exotic! It, <laughs> In those was. Days. it was amazing. It was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, little island off yeah. the south of England. Yeah, yeah. nice. So, okay. So, so that was that was my first role, uh, real, real role after after a training program. I was an inspector of accounts on the Isle of Wight. Still tripping back to to cool. Reading, Reading on a regular basis because I actually did play a little bit of music back then, uh, yeah. very badly. Uh, I was in a punk band called the Leaping Geckos. Well, that was a criteria to play music badly, to be in a punk band, wasn't it, really? Absolutely. So, yeah, you fitted that criteria yeah, beautifully. Absolutely. Excellent. What were they called again? Leaping Gecko. Leaping Gecko. Uh, That's that, quite cool. And that came from a um, from a um, David Attenborough programme. So I, I was very fortunate because basically I, I, the career, career choices uh, I never had to make, really. They just they just flowed. Um, yeah. Now, in some ways, that was, that was unfortunate because I never made a positive choice on anything. It was basically yeah. just things just happened. You went along um, with just, them. Just went along with those. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was fortunate in that the, the career eventually took me to a company that um, had operations overseas, a financial company had operations overseas, the main one being in Hong Kong. And actually, oh, really? a, actually a couple of years earlier, they decided that they were going to close down all the operations outside of Europe. Um, and at the 11th hour, the, 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 the boss of the UK, UK side stepped in and said, we want to keep... Hong Kong going because of X X Y Z, yeah. And I was offered that opportunity to to um, to to come out to Hong Kong. Okay. Um, uh, so 
was what 90, year was that? Yeah. 97. It was actually 96. Um, okay. But, but um, moved the year moved before the handover. The year before the handover. Yeah. Um, and at that time, we were working predominantly with the British civil servants that were over here, the forces, the police, etc. Uh, with effectively re repatriation advice for, yeah. them, for them going back to the UK. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, so I got sent over at that time with a, a two-year contract, but really six months to consider whether or not we kept kept the place open or not. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, so I was given six months to consider that, and six years later we closed it. We lived at that time in Discovery Bay. Um, I've come over with a nine-year-old uh, down to a uh, two-year-old. Right, and so three three children. Yes, and um, we we had them in Discovery Bay International School. It was a wonderful school. Um, you know, th there are certain life moments that you need to make decisions around. One of those being schooling. Yeah, uh, diff different points. We'd already made a decision uh, by the time the company that, that, as I mentioned, it closed down. We'd already made a decision that we were going to keep my our, the kids in the secondary school here. Uh, and then took about nine months um, running kids around the mountains of Hong Kong. Oh, all right, so nice. So ended up working uh, with, with Dragonfly. You know, okay, Dragonfly I here. don't actually. Uh, so Tre 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 Island, Treasure Island, as was. Oh, okay. They yeah. used they used to use a company called Dragonfly for okay. experiential learning courses for for, for for children. Absolutely loved it. Okay. Basically, it took about nine months doing that, and then basically the. Um, um, the wife basically said, "You need need to get back to work, so we need to pay some bills." A proper job. A proper job. <laughs> so uh, ended back ended ended back in finance. Yes. And yeah. Through a couple of iterations, that's where I was up until three years ago. Yeah. Okay. I guess at some point in time you felt, okay, I want to change my life again. Did you? Yeah. Um, I suppose I'd wanted to change change things a couple of years earlier than that, but um, yeah. the business I was I was in was bought by a UK institution. Um, and that UK institution needed needed my licences and needed me to be locked in for a couple of years. Okay. Um, right. So I was actually locked in for, it ended up being nearly four or five years because there was a couple of iterations. Um, and that was fine. It, 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 yeah. It, 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 it all served purposes on both sides. Yes. Um, but I'd already reached the point where I, I wanted to be outside of, outside of uh, a, a corporate environment. Um, yeah. Uh, and I suppose... Going back to one of your questions earlier about some advice um, received, well, what uh, one of the piece of advice I I was given to clients was was about understanding where they wanted to be, really picturing where they wanted to be. What and yeah. you know, how, how, what do the flowers smell like? What does the coffee? What does what coffee have you got on the table? Yeah, where is that coffee? Is it sitting here or is it sitting there? Um, really yeah. think about where it is you want to want, want to be and and the life you want to live. Um, and then let's do a little bit of bit of brainstorming around that as to how much that lifestyle costs you. Yes, yes. Because once you're there, yeah, then that's... You're on the road to making the, that happen, aren't yes. you? You've built your dream, your yeah. goal is yeah. something you, you then want to achieve. That's right. Once you've got a really clear picture in your mind and mm. you, can re you can really experience it. it, it, it it's, yeah. Sportsmen do it all the time. They, they, envisage, yeah. they envisage the win. Yes. Um, yes. They, they 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 work out that first corner. They, they, work, they yeah, yeah. They've got it all in their head, and it's yeah. the same same sort of thing. Too many people just drift through life. Yes. And they keep saying, "Well, I'm earning for the future." I say, well, "Okay, what's the future look like?" Yeah. Well, I'm going to retire. Okay, but what does that what does it mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are so, you going to retire with money or old age? Or you yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 the advice that I took for myself was, "How much is enough?" Yes. Um, no reality is I probably got that slightly wrong I probably do need a little bit more but, but I think we all have actually Mark <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but the yeah. but, but uh, it, it, having enough to be able to step back and actually do things that you really want to yes, do yes still um, to be able to make choices yeah yeah, yeah. and, and that, that's where I'd got to and that's what happened roughly three, yeah. three roughly three years ago yeah like a lot of people I, I then started I really wrote down a long list of things I wanted to do and wanted to achieve. Yeah. That's a, a to-do list uh, uh, or whatever you want to, want to call it. Um, and um, number one on that list was to travel. Yes. Because 
Yeah. You know, I, I love love world experiences and so, so, yeah. so, so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course, uh, <laughs> uh, when did I do this? Yes, sure. Start, start of COVID. Yeah, <laughs> so yes, yeah, yeah. It was actually just before. It was during during the um, during the uh, protests. Um, actually, they've made yeah, made, so made the step. Twenty nineteen now, yeah. aren't we? And yeah. um, at that point, I'd actually we actually had a, a foster child with us. Yeah. So so we we knew we couldn't do too much in the in the short term in terms of that, and then of course COVID started. So uh, so 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 that number one element sort of disappeared yeah, evaporated in a, rapidly. Yeah, yeah but then uh, then if i because i've still got the list um if I, if I if i look at the number two three four five i've not done any of them okay that's interesting i've not done any of them right um right and consciously or no consciously so, no 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 yeah it, 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 it it's it, other things with this can attitude yes have come along and they've they've been a little bit more exciting to me yeah than than whatever so let, let, let's talk about music because yeah. number two was because i do play music um I'm, I'm in a couple of bands i was actually in uh, the 852 which is a big soul band yeah. and we just started the uh, the nagging egypts which uh, so that's five years old now uh, which is the celtic band black velvet wasn't on the horizon and there was yeah. still another another band floating around called the, the vibe ah of vibes should i oh. say not, not the <laughs> vibe vibes um a friend of mine that lives lives here in Murray Rose, still 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 here he was the singer in the band ah okay um, and we were okay. The, we were the hardest working band in discovery bay that was our little motto <laughs> excellent um, and these the are all folk based no, no, not at all, not, not at all. Okay. No, no, no. So the vibe, the vibe was basically a party band. So uh, it was basically a four-piece gu guitar, five-piece with a with a lady singer, but four-piece core core band. Yeah, guitar band, classic pl playing yeah. Katy Perry. Oh, right. So not classic. <laughs> I wouldn't have Absolutely not money classic. Money on that one. No, okay. exactly. Well, right. I'll tell you what happened, actually. I um, hope the woman was Katie Perry, Perry, was she? <laughs> no, she wasn't. We had a couple of lead singers uh, who we were all very fortunate to have because we were all four old yeah. geezers. Um, <laughs> Fronting up. Front, front with a normally a rather attractive young lady yes. at the front who could sing her heart out. So uh, that, that was always really good. good. But I tell you, I tell you we, we started out originally as as a standard cover band, you know, playing yeah. playing um, Summer 69 all that. That, that sort of stuff yeah and uh the, the the sort of the sort of the moment was actually having a i used to do the finance section on phil's show okay morning brew right okay um and i would so i i the company i was with did and uh, i yeah. was one of their spokespeople so i'd go in and and talk about finance yes with I phil, phil in the morning yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and basically, one one day he, he said, oh, "What are you doing at the weekend?" And I said, "Oh, by the way, we're playing at uh, the Australian International um, uh, School Fair." Right. And he said, "Oh, you're, 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 we're going to be broadcasting from there." So he said, "Oh, that'd be great. It'd be great if you could broadcast one of our songs." He says, "But he says, but you're not going to be singing 'I'm an old geezer,' are you?" <laughs> and I sat there and said, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so at that, at that point, that you know, was an epiphany. It was, was an it? epiphany moment, and then, at, at roughly <laughs> the same time, there was there was a there was a little post on Facebook talking about cover band bingo. Right. Okay. And it basically had a bingo card, and it, it, it had <laughs> cover band bingo, bingo and, it, and, on, and on the card basically had uh, you are definitely a cover band if you play more than 10 of these songs, and it was a card, and it had basically Sweet Child of Mine, da 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 da. Uh, Your set list. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basically, love it. So, love it, so love it. from that point onwards, um, yeah. we're sort of 2019 still, 2020. Uh, you would would have been around that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. From that okay. that point onwards, I start I start from a musical point of view. I started to get the bands that I wanted to be in needed to have an impact. They needed yes. to be fun because yes. let's be let's be honest, cover band cover bands are brilliant they're great great fun yeah um you know you go into the watch and somebody's playing uh, switch out of mind yes. well everybody sings a lot it's yeah great. yeah it is, it is a great experience yeah. i'm not knocking amazonia it. do well as yeah well as i'm something. not knocking it but it but yeah. it's but it's something that all the dad bands do yeah in hong kong yeah There's so for that for, for that that point i started to actually say well okay i want to be in bands that that we at that point were cover bands um but i wanted to have a very specific position so the vibe Vibes became a, a cover band for party songs that the ladies ladies enjoyed. Okay, yeah, yeah. nice, nice yeah. idea. So, so yes. that, that, that was that was that. So yeah. It, so it wasn't dad rock; it was mum rock. Mum rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that yeah. was that. And they're usually the ones that are prepared to dance and have. Fun, aren't have they? Fun. Whereas the dads are a little bit more standard at the bar. I don't want to look. Yeah, exactly. I don't <laughs> look like an idiot. So that was that yes. was that was gotcha, gotcha. That, that was the vibes. Yeah. Uh, the other band, uh, which uh, 
potentially is going to be resurrected. Unfortunately, through COVID, we lost a few members. Uh, it was a band called the 852, which started out as a band called Black Cat Blues, and then basically yeah. through a bit of iterations, ended up as called the 852. And that was a that was a soul band. That was a northern soul band. Nice. Okay. So, so like we, that. We, we played. Um, as you know, Northern Soul as a genre is sort of second division Motown, second division yes. stacks, stacks, stacks artists, yeah. but, stateside, but, but, but music that is, yeah. that is great, great fun, uh, yeah. tic- particularly with the big horn section. Um, and uh, we, 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 we had great opportunity to play a couple of really, really fantastic events with the 852. So the 852 was, was, was a soul band. And the Nag and Egypts came into that, that mix as well, because obviously yeah. it's a Celt- Celtic band. Yes. Uh, at that point, it was a broad Celtic, because we also had a, um, a Scotsman on the fiddle. Um, so so we, we had Scottish tunes and we had, we had Irish tunes. So that, that's where that's... So, so going back again, as I was retiring, those things were all still ticking along yes and on yes. my list number one number one was to be a better musician because you know, yeah I, I'm, I'm a jobbing musician I, okay I, I, yeah. I, I play bass rather poorly I play guitar even worse yeah um, I play other little instruments even worse than that um, and um, you know number one was actually step up and actually be a good musician yes uh, yes I, and, and my band bandmates will attest to this today I don't even practice in between Right. between gigs and then, yeah. like, music for me is about the experience as opposed to the playing then. Yeah. I mean I enjoy the playing but I enjoy I the experience that. of playing yes I get that yeah. not, not totally the technicality of playing yeah yeah yeah. yeah. The, the reality is that the scene's growing yeah um, there's always been so, some good original artists in Hong Kong there, there always have been yeah yeah um, David yeah. Barry Knives who final gig was last weekend yes have been around for a long time there was a band called League of Gentlemen came up with a brilliant album about uh, seven, eight, maybe maybe longer longer ago than that. Uh, Shumkin Mansions uh, were, were around uh, pre-COVID. Yeah. I'm talking pre-COVID here. So there were always were some good original artists in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah, but basically the last couple of years, um, uh, my interest in the local scene has grown because the local scene's grown. Yeah, yes. Um, they're, they're, you know, when, when, I, when I started uh, my retirement, so to speak, I planned to go travelling because I couldn't yeah. go travelling. I started to look look at what was going on locally. Friends were starting to write some interesting music themselves. People were were releasing things on a far more regular basis, Spotify and so on and so on and so forth. And you just got this sense that there was a growing originality uh, in 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 the in the city that that yes. had been there but not to the same extent. The nice thing about being in a world city um, with a yeah. with a diverse population base that comes from many many. Um, walks of life firstly but secondly uh, cultures the, the the positive thing actually is we've, we've pretty much every genre you can think of is being covered at some or is being created today somewhere in hong kong yes um, yes you know the, the i had the pleasure of or have the pleasure of running a thing called what the folk which is um which is basically a world yes. music uh, forum um where we put on shows and i've had the pleasure of uh, nepalese artists i've had the pleasure of um, uh, Mexican, um, Canadian, um, French, uh, Ukrainian, yes, uh, uh, and and they they they're not just recreating sounds of sounds of the past, i.e. folk music. Yeah, they're using those those traditions to bring some new tunes, new tunes and new ideas okay. to, to the table as well. Good so, to hear. So so going back a little bit, if I may, um, yeah, sure. the, the 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 sort of starting point is 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 I, I, I I'm absolutely passionate about about the originality that's grown in Hong Kong. Um, yeah. Not not me and I, Nagan Egypt and Black Velvet, but just, just the environment. And I would be regardless of what I was doing myself. So we've got two hats. I'm a musician um, creating some music and I'm also I'm also passionate about the music scene. Yes. Um, so I always have to disc take those two hats. Whenever I'm talking to venues, it's, yeah. it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting. So I'm talking about, I want to put on shows. What for your band? Well, well, yes. Yeah. But at the same time, for these people, because these people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, is it personal or is it business? Or yeah, yeah is there an agenda here or is it that's hidden right, agenda? That's right, that's right. So no, it's, it's just yeah. Yeah. So uh, okay. Um, and uh, the the local scene uh, really does need a, a, a massive push, and we're, and one of the things that we're trying, we I am I am trying to think through with people, is is how do we get Hong Kong original artists outside of the Canto Pop area, which yes. is massive and brilliant, 
but it's got a market yes and it's got an infrastructure to support it and it's got agencies and it's got it's got venues and it's got it's got foothold mm. into Guangzhou and it's got foothold into into Beijing it's got foothold into Taiwan and it's big yeah how do we how do we take a band such as Murphy's Law who are who are a fantastic group of musicians playing brilliant original music yeah um, with a huge amount of passion with a front man who's incredibly charismatic how do, you, how do you take that, which is, if it's sat back in the UK or France, because they're, they're French, French, um, yeah. um, uh, it's a French band, French group, yeah. group of artists. How, if it's sat back, back there, it would, have a, it would have a following of 10 times what it's got in Hong Kong. Yes, yeah. So how, how, do, how do we get that? That organicness into the more professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So What's y- the young, platform to do it on? Young yeah. Bucks, Young Bucks, Can- yes. Canadian group. Absolutely brilliant. Enormously talented. Rookie album. Yeah. Brilliant. Favorite album of last, actually two years ago now, but um, but yeah. uh, f- favorite album of two years ago. Great live. As great, well. great live. Uh, the song "Rookies," uh, written by uh, Rob Anderson, the song by Rob Anderson is just heartbreakingly beautiful. Mm. Um, Company Store, which is a which is a cover, but a, but an original version of that cover. Yeah. Um, is it, those two songs are just just amazing. Um, how do you get that out into the out into yeah. the, out into the scene? Yes, um, because yes, uh, do they want it? Is actually another question. In fairness, yeah. But, but uh, I mean, there are there are some organisations out there. So the underground, Chris Chris B's underground. Is, yes, is, is, she is, does is, a good, great job. She's a really really good job, predominantly yeah. for the indie scene. Yeah. Um, but uh, but she does a really good job generally for the music industry. Um, yeah. Both in terms of promotion and uh, sort of sort of facilitating events and so on and so forth, which is great. Yeah, there is a musicians' union. The musicians' union actually is predominantly around the uh, health and welfare yeah. uh, of the of the jobbing musicians, um, which which is which is particularly the last three years has been really really important. Yeah. Um, so all of those bands, that. all those bands that. Uh, we all have such great times with at the various various bars and clubs around Hong Kong that suddenly just couldn't be working. Yeah. So, so they did they did a fantastic job on that over the last last two three years. Yeah. But but in terms of the taking an artist, and I'm not talking about management, I'm not talking about promotional aid agencies, but but trying to raise awareness for for that artist. As I said, yeah. Todd Warnermore just released a brand new album. Does anybody know about it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how would they know about it? Type how of thing. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of good resources here. We got you know, Paul and the Sunrise Studios as well, and yep. um, you know a, a good connection. We're small enough and tangible enough, Hong Kong, to get these things together. But it's making sure that the roots are set at the right level. That things yeah. have got something which we can build those things on yeah ab- absolutely yeah. absolutely so i mean clock and flap did a great job of pr- promoting local artists because they, they put on a, a, a good number of of guys on the on that stage that's a global event yeah again if you look standing if you look at uh nme you know they yeah. have the, the our Bible of the uh, day it was the Bible of the day. Yeah, still you yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the en- enemy covered covered clock. New and musical flat. express. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so there were there were some nice little photos. But Did Murph, they? Yeah, yeah Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law ended up with because uh, you're very photogenic. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Murphy's Law ended up with, uh, with a couple of photos in, in in there and stuff. So that that's 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 yeah great. That's so internationalism. Flat, yeah. Yeah. So clock and flat. Thank you guys for your support. Yeah, um, of, of local artists. Uh, yeah, seven, sevens last year. Um, they they had the focus on local artists. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes left, and, and then we're going to wind up, Mark. Um, what thoughts do you want to leave with us? Who who is Mark Rawson today? Mark Rawson today re- really is um, an individual that's interested in ideas uh, to listen to, to 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 bash around over a coffee. Open and, mind, uh, open minded, and, and and happy to help and assist in any way you possibly can, and and, that, and really is buy yeah, me a coffee. And I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy, yeah. happy to have a chat. Yeah, um, I think the wonderful thing about Hong Kong is 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 exactly what we said about earlier. It's a very creative place. It's a very very empowering place. Very inspiring, um, and and part of that comes from it's a smallish community, um, but of but of like-minded individuals sometimes all it needs is basically a chat to say ah you should talk to xyz yes um and and if that's if that's of any help to anybody then i'm more than happy to do so 
So, yeah. so you can reach out to myself I, I am on Facebook, uh, Mark Rawson, but uh, I, I run a thing called What the Folk Hong Kong. Yes. Um, and uh, that, 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 that can be picked up on Facebook relatively easy, What the Folk Hong Kong. Okay, all right. Well, I think we've run a good course there, and it just <laughs> remains for me to say, Mark Rawson, thank you very much for coming to Vibe today. Thank you very much. I've loved this opportunity. <laughs> so thank you, Gary. You can listen to all our Vibrations podcasts published on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, TuneIn and Alexa, Stitcher, Listen Notes, Player FM, SoundCloud and a few others. Or you can watch on our YouTube channel under Live at Vibe HK. Or follow the links from our website at vibehk.com. The opening and closing music comes from Celestial and is called Green Island Dub and is on the Retrospect vinyl album, on sale at Vibe. Finally, a reminder that Vibe is open seven days a week, every day of the year, from 12 noon until approximately 6.30pm. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for listening to the 45th Vibe Book and Music Shop podcast called Vibrations. I'm Gary Brightman. You get my vibe? Can you imagine what this old island must have looked like to those Dutch sailors when they first saw it? Fresh green. Like a dream of a new world. They must have held their breath. Afraid it would disappear before they could touch it.